Hello everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zen. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump thing that is available in English. Um, till the end of time, and or until the end of us, whichever one, I think we can outlive time at this point, with the current goings-on with uh, technology. <laughs> I expect Zenbot and Wokebot to... Unfortunately, they're going to take Wokebot and they're going to make him something else. I'm going to have to be Wokeybot, but... Uh, yeah, Wokebot will be some sort of... Yeah. You, Republican <laughs> candidate think piece. So, uh, funny enough, uh, so I was able to get into uh, Blue Skies, the, uh, the Twitter that's actually Twitter, and I was actually able to take Wokey as the handle... And it was the first time ever that I was just like, this kind of feels weird without the purple, because now I feel like I'm going to get harassed <laughs> by <laughs> multiple people, because by the beginning part of my name does say woke in it, it's just a Y at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, it does. So I was like, oh, whatever. And then I was like, is it really that bad? And then I did a quick uh, Google search of Wokey, and it was a lot of, like, um dumbass talking points talking about they're going to wokey and i was like oh okay they're not talking about me this is not what i want my legacy to be known i want to be known as the man who ruined america by making the barrel dragon real <laughs> i don't want to be known about this <laughs> but we plan to do this until the end of times itself the main series we talk about is gintama and the other two series we talk about is jujutsu kaisen and kuroko's basketball which i swear to god someday we are gonna get i have watched it we yeah just we'll come back to it one of these days I'm yeah sure. we literally i've seen the episodes we can talk about it it's just that we never have the time for it but thankfully by next week i hope to have everything solved and ready to talk about it again it's just really funny that my work decided to fuck me all of a sudden on like wednesdays <laughs> like wednesday was safe for so long and then they decided to just screw me over. But today we're going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen, and we have a lot of episodes to cover because it's been a while since we've talked about it, since uh, I left to go to Vegas, I think, basically. But thankfully, that's only like three episodes, episode 27, 28, and 29. And tomorrow, or by the time that this releases, um, the start of the Shibuya arc should be starting. Is that right? Yes. Oh. It's, it's today, I think. It was there yesterday? Uh, it's either today or checked, tomorrow. I think it was. It was like yeah, like right now. Yeah, it should be. I I think it's typically when we release these. That's when the new one comes out. Is the way we plan it or anything? Anyway, good hype stuff. So finally, let's uh, talk about hidden inventory part three. Zen episode twenty seven. Tell us all about it. So episode twenty seven. Uh, we start with the kidnapping of the maid getting resolved very quickly. Gojo, it's funny because this doesn't show up in the manga at all. In the anime, Gojo just like kicks the door open and starts stomping on the dude. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, they save them with no problem, and then they go and they start like uh, hanging out on the beach. Uh, Nanami and Haibara show up as well, and they're like, "This is a this is a shitty mission for us, but whatever, we'll be here." And, and uh, Haibara's like, "Nah, it's awesome." <laughs> thread <laughs> i'm hyped to be here um they're all kind of hanging out on the beach and uh geto is like hey gojo uh you have not slept once or turned off your curse technique a single time since the mission started and he's like yeah i'm just rad like that it'll be fine <laughs> we're you'll you'll be you're here to watch me and and help so it's it's gonna be fine um they decide that they want to use the beach to make Rico's final days special before she gets absorbed into Tengen. Um, they do make it back to Jujutsu High, and they kind of have like a little we did it moment because uh, they got inside the barrier, and then Gojo turns his technique off, and then the minute that he does that, he gets stabbed in the back with a sword. Um, it is Toji who jumps in and stabs him, and they talk about how... Uh, like Toji's plan was to put out the fake bounty to make people attack them constantly so that they would tire Gojo out because he'd always be on guard. And then when he finally let his guard down, Toji would be able to attack because he knew that he would be like exhausted and relieved. Uh, they start fighting. Geto like has this big old worm eat Toji, and then Toji cuts his way out. Um, they're they're like fighting through the grounds of the school where they just absolutely destroy the shit out of the school. Like, Gojo rips a bunch of buildings apart with his curse technique. 
Uh, Toji reveals that he has a different weapon. It's a like a little knife that he pulls out of his uh, little guy's mouth. Yep. He releases a bunch of cursed spirits to cover up the cursed energy of his little worm guy. Because what was happening was the little worm guy was how Gojo was tracking him. Because Toji has no cursed energy, so it's like it's like Dragon Ball. He was like sensing his key, uh, but he doesn't have any. So he was sensing the little worm guy. So he released a bunch of weak little cursed spirits to mask the worm. So you couldn't do that anymore. Um, Gojo goes on the defensive, and then the minute that he does, he uses the sword, the the little knife, to stab him because the knife uh, negates curse techniques. So he needed Gojo to fall back on the defense instead of trying to blast him away so that he could get stabbed. Uh, He stabs him in the neck. Then he starts stabbing him in the legs a bunch of times. He slices his chest open, and then he stabs him in the head with a little tiny knife. Uh, and then he walks off to go after Rico and uh, Getso. They are kind of having this like emotional goodbye, and then Geto says that, you know what? Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. We will... Uh, we'll Deal, we'll deal with the consequences or whatever, but we'll, we're the strongest. We'll protect you if you decide you don't want to do this. Um, we'll, we'll be on your side. And so she goes to take Geto's hand and then suddenly gets shot from off screen right through the head when Toji walks in because uh, he caught up. Geto asks how Toji caught up with them, and he says that it's because he killed Gojo. Uh, Geto summons a big old dragon curse spirit and says that he's going to kill him then, and then the episode ends before they start fighting. Mm-hmm. How would you feel about this one, Zen? It's good. It's real good. Uh, this whole conclusion of this arc is super good. Uh, the Rico stuff was crazy sad. Uh, the the jump scare when she gets shot is is real. It's a, that, it's a depressing it, shit. It got me real good because I was just kind of getting. They really lull you into it with them playing the ED over it, and then when the gunshot just breaks it, I I I, I audibly just like jumped. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, uh, wait, I, I forgot that this is how it goes. <laughs> so it got me again. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's just mean. <laughs> it's really, yeah. really it's fucked up. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Um, yeah, the this episode I also thought was really good. This is the end of this arc I remember really liking. And I've uh, they've adapted it extremely well. I like the stuff that they added. I don't remember the beach stuff. In... There was beach stuff in the manga. It wasn't as as built out. Like I don't think they like the, like the the shot of her walking with the whales in the aquarium is definitely in the manga. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is that shot in the beginning of the episode where they're just like whoa? And they're just like hanging out at the beach. The like running through the water. Yeah, was that? I, in... I don't think so. I think the the first beach shot from the manga is just like them sitting at the beach talking. Okay, fair enough. Because I thought it was really well done with them at the entrance, uh, the at the beginning of the episode where they're talking about like, uh, they're having like a really serious conversation, saying because she they want to go save the maid, and they're like, okay, we're gonna go do it on our own, basically, and then you're not gonna get involved. And she says like, no, I need to get involved because I didn't get to say goodbye. What if I don't get to say goodbye? And then Gojo gives them gives her kind of like this. All right, you're coming with us, and if it's too dangerous, then you're not going to be allowed to go. But if at any point you get scared, you're also, I'm. I, I think he says like I'm going to kill you then or something. Not that I'm going to kill you, but basically you're also off then. But you basically no matter what, you have to be dedicated to this. So don't get scared. And if things look bad, then you're out of there. And then she gives like a very serious yeah. And then it cuts to them at the beach, <laughs> like immediately <Yep>. afterwards. Just- <laughs> Like, whoa, so much fun. Sea cucumber grows. <laughs> Having a good time at the beach. I thought that was really funny because I remembered that, like, um, from the last time we talked about it, it was like, oh, yeah, they're going to show us a little bit more about that. And I was like, oh, okay. And then that entrance completely caught me off guard with how quickly. And also that, that kicking down the door was just super funny when he just kicks down the door and they're there. Yeah, and just start stomping the guys in there. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, I really liked Nanami's bit here when he's like, this is very annoying. We have to go pick them up. And then Gojo's like, we're going to stay on the, (laughs) we're going to stay just a little bit longer. And then they have to call him up and say like, hey, they're going to be staying a little bit longer. He's just like pissed. (laughs) Like unbelievable levels of pity. He's like, ah, I hate you so much. (laughs) 
<laughs> that's really good um and yeah i liked a lot of the stuff um related to the like the the underwater kind of motif that they had going on there like with the whales and stuff and kind of her feelings of feeling like being special but at the same time being disconnected from everything which kind of goes into some stuff that goes with gojo in the kind of coming up episode and i think actually in general the kind of idea of being like feeling like you like knowing that you're special and you're different from a lot of other people but also the alienation that kind of comes with it at the same time and maybe the also idea of just like what she actually wanted at the end is like even though at the beginning she was gung-ho she's like oh it's a great honor to be merged with tengen at the end she's kind of like i i actually don't want that i actually just kind of want to live a normal life and live a good life and continue being with you guys and hanging out that's actually what i want and that only makes it that more sad when she just doesn't get that. And then it gets even worse in the next episode where you, some other stuff is revealed where it's like, this is just bad overall. <laughs> this is so messed up. This entire situation just doesn't feel good. But I really like this episode is the the basis here. The fight between Gojo and uh, Toji was also really good. I also like the little worm things that he had. I remember in the manga, I was never 100% sure what those things were supposed to actually be. And then seeing them in here and them making like little noises like <laughs> when they're doing the thing. Gross. <laughs> yeah, they're so gross. And then later on when he shows like, oh, here's how I get them out. That's also gross. <laughs> they're just all gross to it, but... I really like him, and I also really like the fight. And it was during this fight I realized, like, damn, it's a real shame that they only make arena fighters now, because he would be so sick in a 2D fighting game. Yeah, I, I, dude, I'm so sick of the anime arena fighters. You just can't escape it. You can't escape it. You just can't at all. But I was like, oh, if, we, they had, if this anime just come out during the 90s where they still cared about making 2d stuff he would have been an awesome fighter because i love the way he fights i like how different he feels like the core the using the cursed weapons i think is really cool in general and the way he fights and the way he's actually able to kind of like um stand against gojo is really uh, uh impressive I also like the little bits where he's like having beef with a child as well i think that's also just funny in general yeah we're like <laughs> He's just like, uh, it's like that meme, the, uh, hey, get your boy, bro. He's like, what, do you fuck the baby? <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's looking at me funny. Get your boy. <laughs> get your boy is what he's doing. He's like, he's almost immediate when he, he when he gets noticed. He's like, this damn child. I'm a, he's having beef with this tiny kid who's able to notice him. He's like, that's the only time I've ever been noticed, and that's it. And I also like that he's just like nonstop, just com the complete brutal way that he uh, stabs him. <laughs> <laughs> where he's just like not nah, cuts up right open down the middle just stab 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 like non-stop stabbing it's really good and of course the the va also being dio helps a whole bunch with this yes toji having dio's voice is really good Ugh, fits so well just a oh, well done and this was a great episode i agree with you 100 percent. it's fantastic and anything else to say about it zen no just quality Good well, quality stuff. If you were to think about, because the name of this episode is called Hidden Inventory Part 3, what would you give it as an actual title for an episode? Because uh, I'm my feeling... Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> Whiplash? Yeah, because it starts out fun at the beach, and then she gets shot in the fucking head. That's fair. I would go to, I would Emotional fucking explosion. It is. In my head, I was thinking of an Ash Ketchum style quit bugging. Like, you know how in the beginning of Pokemon, it would always be like da 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 da, and then it would be the name of it would be like quit bugging, and it would be an episode dedicated to Caterpie. That's what I'm feeling because of the bugs, but I actually like yours more because that is 100% what happens here. It's a whiplash. Uh -huh. So we'll go with that for the Hidden Inventory Part 3 whiplash. And now let's go on to the next episode. Episode uh, 28, Him Hidden Inventory, Part 4. Go ahead, Zen. Part 4, uh, Ghetto and uh, Toji start fighting. Uh, they kind of expand. I'm pretty sure, it's been a while since I've read it, I'm pretty sure this uh, fight is expanded from the one in the manga. Uh, but 
they are fighting, trying to ascertain if the maid is dead. Toji says she's probably dead. Uh, they start fighting again. Toji cuts the dragon, like, completely in half. Um, so Geto makes a plan to uh, try to absorb the worm. So he brings up one of these, like, I think it's like a Japanese folklore myth where it's like this creepy the, monster the, lady. Yeah, the, the lady with scissors. The, yes. Who asks you the question of, do I look if, pretty? Am I pretty? Yeah. yeah. Um, Toji figures it out and is like, ah, no, nah, you're not my type. And so he looks like he's going to get snipped, but he uses the inverted spear of heaven, which negates cursed techniques to break it. Um, Geto tries to grab the worm. But then Toji's like, that's very dumb of you for coming this close to me. And so he, like, grabs a sword and gashes them up, kicks Geto away. Uh, Toji gives Rico's body over to get paid. And they're like, all right, yeah, you did it. You know, good job. And then as Toji leaves, he sees Gojo standing there covered in blood. Uh, and then we get the, the feral Gojo versus Toji round two where Gojo reveals that he has learned how to use reverse curse technique, which he figured out right at the last minute as he was bleeding out because the uh, Toji didn't stab him with the sword that negates cursed stuff. So because um, he didn't stab him in the brain with that, he was able to keep using cursed energy or whatever. I don't remember the exact reason why that wound not being with the inverted spear is important, but it is. Hmm. Um, I also, it was something about, like, it was negating only the negative part of it but not the positive part and that's when he realized like oh i could just take the positive and keep going from there there's a lot of talk about positive and negative thing and i'm glad you're also a little bit confused by it because <laughs> this also feels like sometimes they explain stuff in jujutsu kaisen and i kind of go that makes sense and then i don't fully understand <laughs> but i'm just gonna go like hey, you know what yes I, I just accept that this works out <laughs> let's keep going <laughs> Go ahead, then. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, so they, they start fighting. Uh, Gojo finally can use his red technique that he tried to use before, and it didn't work. Uh, he launches Toji into the, like, a giant building. Um, Toji's, like, checking his injuries, says he's fine. Uh, and then he notices that Gojo's, like, floating in the sky. Uh, so he attaches a chain to the inverted sphere of heaven and starts to swing it around because he wants to fight him. And then he's like, something doesn't feel right i don't know but whatever i'm gonna win like I'm, I'm gonna kill him again um gojo's floating there and he gives the the famous speech where he's like i don't feel sad about anything like i only feel good right now um and then he gives the uh throughout heaven and earth i alone and the honored one moment and then uh, Toji is swinging the chain around at him, and he's just kind of easily dodging it. He almost looks like he's not even paying attention. He's just, like, floating around because he's high on his own, like, power right now. Uh, and then he charges up a new technique, which is hollow purple, which is combining blue and red at the same time. And he shoots it at Toji, and it just absolutely takes off, like, the entire left side of his body. Um... Gojo asks Toji if he has any last words, and he says no, but then he says actually... Um, my kid's gonna get sold off to the Zenin clan, and then he kind of feels bad about that. Um, Ghetto absorbs Toji's little worm, his little worm man. Calls him mom. And then, uh, he sees that Gojo has recovered Rico's body to get back. Um, Gojo says, you know, don't, don't feel bad about what happened, it was my fault, really. Um. And then there's all these people from the association that had her body, like, cheering that she's dead. And Gojo has, says, what if we just kill all of them? What if we just kill them all right now? And Geto's like, that's not... That does, it, there would be pointless. And then Gojo says, does there have to be a point? For, does it, do we need a reason uh, on that? And then um, Geto is kind of like, it, it, as a sorcerers, we have to be you know, better. We have to like do things for a reason. Uh, and then the episode ends as Gojo walks out, cradling her corpse. Hmm. How'd you feel about this one, Zen? Really good. I love this fight. It's one of my favorite fights in the series. Um, the way that they animated Purple was really cool. I didn't really like the way they did it in Season 1 because it didn't... The whole point of Purple is that it's like imaginary like mass. Uh, and so making it a giant energy ball felt weird. 
giving um, him like the Frieza death ball. <laughs> Didn't yeah, feel it was just like a giant him. death ball. Yeah, which felt weird. Um, I really like it in this the way they did it here, where it's just kind of like you don't actually see it. It just kind of blows through everything in front of it, and it just destroys it all. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a good episode. I love the little conversation there as well. Um, between Ghetto and Gojo at the end, where they're kind of like, Gojo's near the breaking point, and Ghetto kind of is too, but he's still trying to affirm, like, sorcerers need to be something more, you know? Yeah, yeah, the ending uh, conversation between them is really well done as well. As as they are also having the conversation, you can see the shadows go over one of them and not the other. Something that they kind of start to do more when the next one has more stuff kind of changes about them. Really well done. Uh, and yeah, just like you, I thought this episode was uh, excellent. It's amazing. I also really... It's funny because I, I really do love this arc, even though this arc confused the hell out of me in the beginning of it when I was reading it in the manga, where I was just like, what's going on? I'm not 100% sure what's going on anymore. Yeah, I've lost the thread, and then somewhere at some point when they started fighting with Toji, I was like, okay, no, I'm back. <laughs> they got me back in here. I'm not, I'm, I'm really digging it, I'm really, and then by the end of it, I was like, oh, that's what was going on, and eventually it all clicked, and I was like, alright, I understand, I feel like a dumbass, but <laughs> at least now I understand it. Um, the fight between, um, the beginning fight, where they're fighting in the uh, Star Vessel place, I thought was really cool. I liked the many, like... <laughs> Uh, like the many dudes that he just like the many cursed spirits that he has on him just in general I think is really cool like when he's fighting and he's using the lady who like um, has a domain that asks you about the question I thought that was really cool the rainbow dragon he has at one point he summons like a giant one eyed orc looking thing against them uh, I think it's a really cool way to fight of just having like this nonstop army of cursed spirits basically and all of them are also kind of based around um a lot of uh, japanese myths and stuff like that i thought it was very cool and also like the reason that he doesn't actually kill him is a like if i killed you i have no idea what happens to the cursed spirits that you actually have like on you that you've absorbed and that's way too much of a hassle for me right now <laughs> so i'm just like gonna leave you alive and that's gonna be good enough for me um and he also makes a mention of it, and something that comes back in later is that he tries to be very, Toji tries to be very careful that he only deals with stuff that gets him paid. And it's, he tries to make sure that if it's something that would that's outside of his pay grade, he doesn't actually want to deal with it, which is what he shows here. It's like, ah, eh, if I killed you, they would only, I don't know what would happen. It would potentially unleash a lot of these cursed spirits, and honestly, I don't want to deal with that, because that's outside my pay grade, and I'm not being paid for that, so fuck it. I'm not, I'm going to keep you alive, and we're good here. And it shows that when he's fighting Gojo, when he's actually fighting him and he's like, something feels off, and he realizes the thing that feels off is that he should have never fought Gojo at all. And in general, he would have never fought him, because there's no point in him fighting him. Like, what's the point of him fighting someone if there's not going to be any money related to him or anything like that? But he realizes that something inside of him changed when he was fighting him, which is that he remembered all the stuff that was the anger that he had beforehand related to like Jujutsu um, sorcerers and like the hierarchy of stuff. And for that one brief moment, he wanted to prove that he could kill. He like he could feel immediately that Gojo was the strongest. And if he could kill the strongest, then he would finally be able to um put to rest in his mind all the shit that he had to deal with with the sorcerers and he just learns that oh actually i was never i never had a chance against them and it was very stupid for me to even attempt to do anything like this but you know what you know something and the old me basically woke up and i thought part of me that i thought was gone uh came back and that's why i'm dead now and i'm dying and this sucks because my entire part of my body. I also really did like his, his, like when he looks at his body and he sees that a lot of it is just missing. And he kind of has his expression on his face that's like, ah, well, that's it. <laughs> I'm not yeah, surviving this. One. Like, mm, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> like Toji has a very like fun expressions to him. Like he does this at the beginning too when he has like, when he makes like a silly face where it's really funny for some reason that whatever he, he like for his face is like very like tough guy-ish 
but occasionally he does like a silly face and i think it's really funny and he almost does it there when he's like looking at his like missing body well uh, missing body parts which is funny i like it when he mentions uh megumi and i like the way that he actually mentions them where he's like ah oh, yeah i have a kid that's gonna be sold off do with that what you will and he's like okay i guess that's your last words then and originally he was just gonna have no last words and be like ah no i'm dead it's fine whatever who cares Mm-hmm. good <laughs> yeah, like, what fuck yeah i'd rather be dead <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be dead at this point it's real all good on my side uh when gojo wakes up i think it's really good uh especially because they really captured his like high on life energy and in general it's really funny that toji steps up to him because i would not want to mess with this guy at all when no. he's like floating eth- ephemerate like <laughs> And the, the crazy thing is is that the way that they have the background in, it almost feels like heaven itself is opening. So it it's kind of painted a lot like the... If you ever see, like, specific paintings of heaven with the yellow background, it looks a lot like that. So it does look a lot like heaven is opening because they realize that Gojo is here now. <laughs> the ultimate god it, himself has arrived. It's funny because it looks like uh, the Jojo depiction of heaven. It, <laughs> when, it like, does. they grow up in the smoke. Yes! You know? <laughs> it, yeah. it looks like that has been arrived here. And it definitely feels that way when he's fighting. And it and the way he fights uh, is amazing. And it's all good. And yeah, I like the end bit there when he's picking up the body and he's leaving. And he gives kind of like this idea of like, mm, I would kind of, you know, could just kill all these fools. <laughs> it would be real easy and I could just do it. And I think it's a, a very, it was a very telling way of looking at it because uh, the way Gojo has been acting, it definitely feels like he's not human anymore. Like he's kind of gone above what would be considered a human at this point with all the stuff that he can do with all the power that he has and the like high way that he's been acting. He does kind of feel like he's above what a hum- what humans would think of. But in that moment, he still has that human impulse of being like, you know, I kind of feel bad that these motherfuckers are clapping <laughs> right now, and it would feel real good to just kill them. And he's and the um, the other being like, no, no, we we can't do that. We have to be better than them. And he's like, there has to be a good reason for it. If we can't, if there's no good reason, then we can't do it. And he's just like, no, nah, I don't feel like we need a reason for this. <laughs> we could just do it. And it'd yeah, be he's fun. literally like, I I could just do it right now. Yeah, <laughs> could just do it right here. I can just do it right here. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm not a hundred. He does say he doesn't have any regrets. He doesn't feel anger. So he's not killing them out of anger. He's more killing them because, hmm, I think you guys should die. <laughs> and I'm kind of feeling with him on this one. I was kind of hoping that there would be <laughs> a very quick death. I was like, that's that's not happening, but it's fun. Really good ass episode and a great way of uh, ending this arc of Hidden Inventory really well done it was uh they're all it's surprising to me how much it just feels like it just keeps getting better like i already thought season one was really good and then season two feels just like damn they are pulling out all the stops for this <laughs> like even you said like what you said with the way he's using the the hollow technique purple it feels like completely different from the way they were even doing it in season one and kind of like having a more completely different. It's so much better too. Yeah. And yeah. And improving on that and kind of taking things like, okay, well, if this move is supposed to be like that and kind of feel like it's imaginary force, like you said, and it just completely eviscerated, then it shouldn't just be a giant. Like that scene would be completely different if he just shot a giant (laughs) purple uh, death ball at him. But the way they do it is just so damn cool. And that look on his face when he's, like, holding it and then he unleashes it. Oh, super well done. Super good. And, yeah, there's not much else to say other than, goddamn, you should be watching Jujutsu Kaisen. (laughs) Yes, seriously. Like, watch it. Why aren't you? Why? Why ain't you? Why? Do it, man. (laughs) Do it. All right, before we move on. From Hidden Inventory Part 4, what do you feel would be a good name for this episode, even though I have a pretty good feeling what it should be named? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like naming it, like, throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honored one. That's such a cool yep. fucking phrase. I, I was about to say that's 100% <laughs> the name of this episode. Uh, it is crazy to me that that's not the name of this episode, <laughs> that it's Hidden Inventory Part 4, but yeah, that... Uh, 
such a badass way of saying it too. It is. So good. All right, let's move on to the next episode, which is the ending of a hidden inventory slash premature death. It's premature death, episode 29. Zen, why don't you go ahead and tell us about it? All right, episode 29. We have... uh, It's been a year. That's how much time it was. It was one year since the fucked up stuff before. Geto or uh, Gojo is talking to Geto and uh, Shoko Ieri that he can do new things with Limitless now. Like um, because of reverse curse technique, he can basically keep uh, the the infinity always running. Because normally, like it would fry his brain, uh, but he doesn't have to worry about that anymore because he can constantly run reverse curse technique to heal it. So it's like a self feeding loop, basically. Uh, he's almost got domain expansion down. Um, Gojo is, you know, everyone's like, oh, he is for sure the strongest. Meanwhile, Ghetto is like, fucking, the dudes look visibly depressed, like he's fucked up, right? Um, yeah. Gojo's like, hey, are you, are you losing weight? Like, what's going on? He's like, ah, nah, I'm, I'm chill, man. I'm chill. Um, <laughs> Got a lot going on. Do I, yeah. You know, I'll be fine. Uh... Gojo is extremely strong at this point, so he just kind of solos missions on his own, and Shoko doesn't go on missions, because that's not her kind of thing. She's like a med, like a medical person. Mm. So she doesn't really go out and fight. Um, and so Geto just kind of is off doing his own thing. Uh, the dude is completely burnt out, like absolutely at the breaking point. Uh, he's literally like in the shower having a fucking breakdown, uh, talking about how eating cursed spirits tastes like eating rags soaked in vomit like all this stuff vomit and shit um mm -hmm. and he keeps thinking about the day where they recovered rico's body and all those people were clapping and he starts being racist um (laughs) because that's going full frieza yeah he goes full frieza um ghetto talks to haibara and he's like hey are you doing okay how's it going and he's like ah i'm I'm doing my best, you know, I'm trying my hardest, doing my best, all that stuff. Uh, he meets Yuki Sukomo, and they kind of have, like, a, a discussion about how to really change the world. Uh, you know, because special grade sorcerers are kind of, like, above everyone else. Like, they're they're at the point where they can sort of determine, like, how things should be. Um, and they kind of talk about wanting to create a world where there are no more cursed spirits, and the easiest way to do that would be to make a world where there are only sorcerers, because sorcerers don't usually become cursed spirits when they die. Uh, Because if you kill someone with cursed energy, like they tried to do with Yuji in Season 1, they won't return as a spirit, as long as you kill them using cursed energy. Um, Yuki asks Geto, do you hate non-sorcerers? And he's like, uh, he kind of doesn't really answer. Yeah, it's like a long discussion that the two of them have, but... um, Yuki's like, Tengen is okay, like, it's all kind of fine, but it's up to you to determine how you feel about people. Because he's kind of like, we could just kill them all. And she is notably, like, not... She doesn't say yes or no. She's just kind of like, that is an option. You know, if that's something that you think, you know, you can think that. And then she kind of leaves. We see that Nanami is there, and Haibara had been killed on a mission that they were on. Uh, they said that the target was too strong for them. It was not supposed to be like something that they should have been sent out to kill. Geto says, get some rest. Gojo's going to do it. And then um, Nanami just kind of is like, if he's this strong, why doesn't he just do everything? Like, why, why are you even still sending us out here to get killed when he can just snap his fingers and it's done? Um, Geto ends up in a little village taking care of some cursed spirits for them, but these villagers have convinced themselves these two little girls are, like, cursed or, like, evil. So they're, like, treating them terribly. They're, like, locked in a cage and, like, beating them and stuff. And Geto's like, all right, I've had it. I'm done. Uh, He slaughters the entire village. He rescues the girls. They are in uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie, if you've seen it. They are part of his band in that movie, these two little girls. Oh, I need to see that. Next week. (laughs) By next week. They are uh, in that with him as well. Um, Gojo's pissed, and he's like, there's no way that Geto would do this. The principal is telling him, like, yes, they would. 
And so uh, Gojo goes out to find him. Shoko finds him first, and they kind of talk to each other. And then uh, Gojo shows up, and they're kind of having this exchange of ideals. And Gojo's like, it would be impossible to kill everyone in the world that's not a sorcerer. But Geto says, you could do it. So, you know, who are you to tell me it's impossible when you know that you could do it yourself? Um, Gojo kind of gets into the position to do a, a purple at him, uh, but he ends up not being able to go through with it, so he just kind of leaves. Uh, we jump ahead, and we see uh, Gojo picking up Megami at the same time as we see uh, Ghetto going over to the time people, like the people that killed Rico, mm -hmm. um, and killing their leader. And then we cut to uh, Gojo waking up after he picks up Megami. And they have like this little chat where he, he says that he's going to take care of Megami. He's not going to let the Zenin clan like take him that way. And then Gojo wakes up in his chair back in the present day, looking up and seeing uh, Megami, Yuji, and Nobara all in the room with him because uh, he was sleeping. And then he says, oh, you know, it's it's nothing. Don't worry about it. And then the episode ends as he gets up and walks away. Mm. It ends in a, in, a, in a happy way, sort of. I mean, he he wakes up and is happy, so that counts as a happy ending for <laughs> but That's as happy as it gets for <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen at times. Yeah, uh, for real. Yeah. How'd you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, really good. Ending is so fucking, like, depressing and sad and, like, ah, it's so good. You're gonna really enjoy Jujutsu Kaisen Zero after seeing all of this. It, it, you're gonna, you're gonna mm -hmm. go in. I think it would be good to have all this in mind to remember it all and then going into it. Because that's the, kind of what I felt like when I was going through it. It was like, now I feel like I'm ready to actually see Zero <laughs> and go through it all. Because that's the one part of it I've just never seen of Jujutsu Kaisen, as I've mentioned multiple times. Um, but yeah, this, this episode was fucking, it's just like depression for 20, for 20, uh -huh. 22 minutes, uh, to the point where they've captured it almost like perfectly with, with ghetto, with what he's going through with the, someone catching on early that it doesn't feel like he's eating very much. The trouble he has with, um, the way he's just like silently in the shower by himself, just like thinking and muttering monkey <laughs> to himself as he thinks about like how shit life is, is is at the moment. And the way he also just looks tired when he's having that conversation as well. The way his eyes just like you you could just look at him and it goes like this guy just feels like he needs a break, man. He's already like <laughs> not it looks like he's not been getting any sleep. He looks like just complete shit. And uh, it's very telling that at the end of the episode, when he does, when he finally does do the massacre that kills a whole bunch of people, and the next time you see him, all that is gone. It's like, no, I shed that all away. I feel better now. And it's like, ah, uh, that, that's very depressing. <laughs> it's very depressing to see someone just completely fall apart as a person. And they do a great job of making it, like, um, letting you know that he can't get over what happened. Like, the the instant when he's... Because it's raining when he's talking to Yuki. And when she's talking, you hear the rain. But when, you, when it goes to him and he starts to explain, like, the way he sees things, suddenly the rain gets, like, really loud. And you realize that the rain sounds a lot like the clapping from the people from the the, the cult we're doing. So the entire time that it's raining in the background and you can hear him and he's giving his thoughts, you just hear the, the, and it sounds exactly like the rain does. And when it cuts to Yuki, it like stops and you kind of feel like, oh, okay. And you can kind of feel like the, the overwhelming sense of just like with that much stuff in the back of your mind, it just keeps pounding and pounding and pounding and it feels just like awful. And then when it finally cuts to someone else and they kind of, kind of talk and you get a reprieve from it. It actually kind of does feel like relief. It's like, oh god, I would also do anything in the world just to not hear the clapping anymore. And that's what he's looking for uh -huh. as well. Is that he just wants it to stop. He doesn't want to hear it anymore. He's just so tired and he can't get over it. And then finally he's able to do the one thing that gets it to stop. And that's the part where he goes, uh, 
too far, and he he becomes what he is, what we now know him as, uh, basically. And yeah, whoa, fucked up, man. <laughs> it's so fucked up. It really is. He even like feels fucked up to talk about, to be honest, because it's just a lot of. Even if it is well done depression, it is still very depressing. <laughs> To talk about and to go through, especially with um, um, when the, when he goes to go see uh, H- Habari and he's been killed because unfortunately it ended up going that way. And even though you've only seen him for a little bit and you just kind of see him like been he's been like the one super positive dude of the Jujutsu Kai <laughs> high dudes since he's been here. And then the, this is just kind of the way he goes out. It kind of feels like oh th- this is messed up and fucked up. And then it also comes back to the Nanami's question, which is like, <laughs> it seems like Gojo could do this all himself. Why doesn't he just do it? And then in his mind, it's kind of like, yeah. And that's the thing he uses against Gojo at the end. He's like, don't tell me something's impossible when you can do it. It's just done. <laughs> basically, don't treat me like a dumbass. I know for a fact that if you wanted to, you could do it, but you don't do it. So here we are. I'm going to find a way to do it because I know you're not going to do it. Just the same way that Gojo could have, uh, in theory, completely wasted the the issue that was that Nanami and Hibari went to go see, but he didn't. So, yeah, really well done. And I'm looking forward to seeing more Jujutsu Kaisen. It's kind of I can't believe that there was a three week break after this. <laughs> that's the one thing I realized after. I know. I st- what a time to stop. Yeah, that's a that's a hell of a long time to stop. Um, and I can't wait to kind of get back into it. I'm I'm already back. I'm gonna we're gonna figure out because I still want to definitely make zero its own thing, but we will definitely cover it the next episode. For sure. So we'll probably I'll just watch that episode and then we'll talk about Zero afterwards. But yeah, really well done. This entire mini arc uh not mini arc, but this arc which was hidden inventory and premature death have been really well done. And it's also been a good way of like looking into Gojo's past and kinda learning a lot more about these characters and just seeing how things were like before um the current setting of Jujutsu Kaisen is and it's uh I don't know if this is what popularized the idea of going back and seeing from, like, the sensei character. Because obviously they haven't done Like, they've done this before with, like... I, can't, I, can't, I don't like bringing it up because I know that it's such a dumb thing to always bring up. But Kakashi had something similar to this, right? Where they showed, like, his past when he was, um... Yeah, when... Yeah, with his, his two little friends. Yes. Uh, Obito ha- and the girl. Like, yeah, how he got his Sharingan gun and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I kind of like this style of stuff, and I feel like it's... Gun and definitely more in there. Sakamoto Days, have, as we've mentioned beforehand, had an arc in the manga that felt very similar to this, kind of showing off the past and showing an event. Um, and actually, and, and for a while, it feels like, oh yeah, and then it goes back to Jujutsu Kaisen, and you're like, that's right, these guys are the main characters. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh wait a minute, yeah, this is the story they were watching. That's right. Let's past see. arcs go so hard. They do. I think <laughs> they're really. They always go hard. They do. They really, they really, really do. And this is one has, has been an excellent one. And uh, can't wait for more Jujutsu Kaisen. Basically, is the the summary here is that I can't wait for more. <laughs> uh, do you have anything else to say, Zen? Uh, no, no, mm-hmm. just really good. This is. I, I still can't decide if this or Shibuya is my favorite arc. It might be this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so fucking good. It it's right. so good, man. Back to back too. Between these two arcs, though this one and then the one that's coming up are some fantastic stuff, and I can't wait uh, to get more into to get to, to, I guess so more because I know there's some people who don't read the manga; they get to just experience it, which is cool. <laughs> Once it's out there, it's known for a vast majority. Because I know definitely some of my friends who um, watch Jujutsu Kaisen and they have not actually had the time to watch to read the manga itself. So they're gonna definitely learn about it, and it's cool. Um, yeah, that's it, and that is it for Jujutsu Kaisen this week. So, how's it looking for next week? Well, obviously, by the time this comes out, the start of the Shibuya arc should be starting. 
we will start covering that next week and then i think next week after that one because we'll be back to basically single episodes for jutsu kaisen coming going forward but we will find t- I, will, I will find time to watch zero and then we will talk about that and that can have its own uh dedicated thing it would have been really good idea to have it during the three week break but <laughs> i kind of got super crazy busy at work so blame it on that but we'll definitely look to do that next week and that sounds good for as far as Jujutsu Kaisen goes. So now it's time to end the show. Let's write the end of Shonen Archive, which means you can go find Zen over on Zen's channel, where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks about weekly Shonen Jump in manga form, not anime form. Um, and... Yeah, go to Zen's channel. Just go add Zen Rado. I swear to God, I since I've said it, I've always made sure to link the channel. So <laughs> the channel will always be there for you to go uh, find. It'll be more. there. It'll be down there. You'll yeah. find it. And then you can also go to Zen's Twitch because he's going to start uh, streaming more, right, Zen? Yes, going to start trying next week to do it often. A couple times this week just to test it out. Hmm. But uh, next week is when we're going to really start trying to kick it in. Yeah, so I'll make sure to leave uh, Zen's Twitch as well in the in the description that you can find it. You can go track down Zen and see him. If you want some more me stuff, you already know where to find it. You can see it right here, the the one-stop shop for everything. If you want some more me stuff that is more related to Marvel Snap, you can go to uh, D Freeze channel, where I've been helping him get back into Marvel Snap a little bit by being there while he uh, plays. He it's really uh, funny because I think the best Marvel Snap video I've ever recorded is now on D Freeze channel. <laughs> <laughs> So, where we play a negative deck, and it's uh, some of the craziest games ever. If you ever wanted to see someone, if you ever wanted to see someone bet it on a thirty-three percent chance to jubilee off a null from the top of the deck, <laughs> that video has that. <laughs> the sickest plays ever that you can imagine in Mister Negative. You can chap deck down, and if you want some more me stuff in general, you can go here. Um, this video should be releasing alongside the Fago Summer Banner because I believe that's happening uh, tonight. So, boom, plenty of videos coming. And hell I'll, yeah, hell yeah, plenty of videos. And I swear, I I keep trying to release more. That's just not Fago. I I've, I did better last week. There was a Paper Mario at some point, <laughs> so I'm getting back into it. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of the show, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it. And we will be back next week for more. Well, funny enough, we should be back. You'll hear more Shonen Archive on Saturday because we will be recording Gintama. So Gintama will also be back. <laughs> and then someday, like I said, Kuroko's Basketball is going to come back as well. We swear. We, I've already seen it. We just need to sit down and talk about it. I can say this every single week and eventually it's going to just be true. <laughs> that it will just manifest itself and it will be there. Um... That's the end, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out!